Hello everyone and greetings. Welcome to the presentation on V4L2 controls from the perspective of video capture devices. Myself, Satyakam Medavaram. The co-author for this presentation is Inbaraj Ilangovan. We are from Samsung Semiconductor India Research that is based in Bangalore in India. Inbaraj is my colleague. We are working together on my PCSI2 controller development for various Samsung SOCs. We implemented CSI2 drivers based on V4L2 that have multiple sensors, serializer and deserializer combination. We prepared this presentation based on our experience with capture devices and the V4L2 controls being used. So here is the agenda for presentation. We first look into the structure of V4L2 framework and then we'll see what is a V4L2 device, what is a V4L2 sub device, what are video device nodes and what are the V4L2 control objects provided by Linux kernel. And then we move on to the topic of uh, controlling V4L2 devices. That is why controls are needed the control methods provided by V4L2, how the user applications can leverage these controls. And we prepared few notes based on our experience on implementing the controls. Finally, we will look into the uh, application with, uh, we'll present a sample capture application with the control methods that we discussed so far. Also, we present the V4L2 CTL util uh, provided by the V4L utils package. At the end of this presentation, we hope uh, the audience will gain fair knowledge of V4L2 controls and using these controls for the capture, de capture devices. Typical video streaming involves multiple devices. In order to explain the structure of V4L2 framework, here we introduce a sample system that consists of camera sensors, serializer and deserializer combination, and a host processor interface to the cameras. For this topic, we assume the host processor interface to be MIPI-CSI2 interface, which is found in most of the systems. In this configuration, cameras are connected to the serializer which then aggregates the camera streams and then transmits over them to the DC laser. The DC laser in turn transfers the image streams to the host processor via the host processor interface. Here we introduce the term bridge device that is responsible for transferring the image data to the memory using the DMA transfers. Any off-chip device or on-chip IP are considered as sub-devices. In the next slide, we will see how V4L2 framework abstracts these devices. V4L2 framework provides the kernel data structures to describe the devices. Struct V4L2 device describes the top is the top level data structure that describes the bridge device and the and action and is responsible for managing the child devices struct v4 to sub device describes the sub devices attached to the bridge device this can be the camera sensors or the MIPI, MIPI csi controller that we shown in previous sample system struct video device describes the video device nodes and exposes these device nodes under the slash dev directory for the user applications. Struct V4L2 CTRL describes the control properties and keeps track of the control value. Struct V4L2 CTRL handler keeps track of all the controls within the device that are registered with that handler. There can be multiple controls for a device and, uh, and these controls uh, which are registered with that handler 
the v4l2cprl handler keeps track of all those controls here is the block diagram for the sample system which we discussed in the previous slide first we have the struct v4l2 device that represents the device instance and we have the struct v4l2 subdev that describes the sub devices that are att attached to the bridge device like the sensors, the serial laser, the DC laser, or the control interface. And we have the video device nodes that are, uh, that are exposed to the user and the slash dev directory. As a slash dev video X or slash dev before L sub dev X, where X is the device number. A total of 256 device can, devices can be registered. Okay, so why controls are needed? Advanced streaming systems usually have multiple devices or IPs, such as the image sensing processor or the multi format codec for the encoding and decoding of video streams. Often these devices provide configuration parameters that are controllable by user and controls provided can be specific to the device which are which can be vendor specific and device control needs can be application specific as well v4l2 framework provides methods to set these controls such as the standard controls extended controls custom controls are the private controls. The capture devices can implement all of these controls or some of the required controls. Each of the available controls are identified by their respective control ID values. V4L2 framework arranges these controls into classes which serve as the base for these control IDs such as the user controls, the MPEG controls, or the camera class controls, all the way up to the RF and the detection controls. V4L2 framework provides standard controls with predefined IDs. The user class serves as the base for these control IDs. The standard controls are defined for brightness, contrast, saturation and all the way up to the color effects the last one v4l2 cid last p1 is not a control id as such but serves as the tag when applications are, con are carrying for the controls the standard controls provided by the framework were not sufficient enough as the hardware capability of devices became more sophisticated, originally intended for complex drivers like MPEG encoders, the controls were extended for other classes as well, such as camera, FM tuner, RF tuner and others. The extended controls for camera class are defined for auto exposure, pan and tilt controls, all the way till all the way up to pan, pan speed and tilt speed. The extended control I will, I have tells expect a pointer to struct v 4 to x controls, which has, which has a pointer to struct v 4 to x control. This allows multiple controls within a class to be grouped together as an array and configured by the applications. Aside from the controls available in framework, depending on the depending on the system, sometimes additional controls are required. These are defined using the custom control IDs. Coming to the capture devices, this can be for sensor for specifying sensor parameters or controlling the test pattern generation or to set the number of 
data lanes and MAPC SI2 interface. Our set per stream controls such as error threshold or the DMA controls for each stream or any other controls that are diverse specific. V4L2 also provides the methods to inherit the control. That is, controls defined by one handler can be added to another by calling the API V4L2 CTRL add handler. This adds the controls defined by the control handler passed in the second arg argument to the control handler passed in the first argument. A filter function can, al can also be defined to specify which controls can be added. The fourth argument specifies to the framework the controls that the controls being added are actually defined by another device. Inheriting controls is useful when the controls implemented by two devices are same, thus avoids the code re-implementation. Re this is useful, for example, when the controls defined for gain, brightness, or exposure are already defined by sensor, which can be reused by the bridge device drivers. There can be occasions when adding the controls, some of them might not be needed to be added. For example, when a debug feature is implemented by a sensor, such control is not always needed to be added to the bridge device node. In such cases, struct v4l2 ctrl provides a bitmap variable is private to inform the framework to exclude the controls to be added. Also, the controls that are added from sub-device can be overwritten by the bridge device driver during the sub-dev registration call. Setting the ease private parameter prevents the controls from being added from sub-device to the root device during the v4l2 device register sub-dev call. So far, we have seen the control methods provided by V4L2 and below are the control flags the driver which the drivers can use to inform about the controls to application. When a control is no longer being used or no longer sorry, when a control is no longer supported, it is advised that the drivers set the V4L2 CTRL flag disabled so that the applications can ignore such control. When a control is being used by one application and cannot be reused by another, the driver can set the control as grabbed. If any other application tries to reuse the control, the framework will throw an EBZ error. The read-only flag is used to indicate that the control cannot be modified, such as the link frequency or the blanking periods. There may be occasions when a, when, when a control is being modified, it can also update the control value of, other, of others. In such occasions, in such occasions the, the drivers can set the update flag. Also, a control may not be applicable when the device configuration is changed. In such cases, the drivers can set the control as inactive. This can be the case usually when the inputs are being switched. The write-only flag is meaningful when, the, when setting the control triggers an action, but reading the control does not is not meaningful. A control can be changed by hardware. Example setting the control as controls for setting the control for auto gain or the auto exposure. In these cases, 
the volatile flag should be set for the control by the driver. If user can set a new one, new new value for such volatile control, the flag execute on write should be set for, by the driver. Finally, a control that changes the buffer layout, such as for the rotation controls, the drivers can set the modify modify layout flag for that control. V4L2 framework provides control notification method wherein any change in control value can be notified to the other device. This is particularly useful when controls are inherited, such as when bridge device adds the controls of sensor sub device. Any changes in control value by the sub device can be notified to the bridge device. Only one notify function should be used per control handler. You can set the notify callback using, using the V4L2 CTFI, CTRL notify API. Before we discuss about integration of V4L2 controls with the Linux Media Controller Framework, we like to introduce the basic terms. As the number of devices participating in the media streaming pipeline, and their functionality increased. Linux provided the media controller framework that helps in device discoverability and, and configuring these devices, wherein the hardware devices are represented as media as a media device consisting of media entities and media pads. The media device is represented by the struct media device. A media entity is any basic hardware block that is participating in the media streaming pipeline. This can be off-chip off -chip devices or the on-chip IPs such as ISP. These are represented by struct media entity. A media pad is a connection endpoint through which the data is transferred. So the pads can be a source pad or the sync pad. These are represented by stacked media pad. A media, con a media link is a connection between two pads, either on the same entity or, or between different entities. The media links are represented by stacked media link. To illustrate the terms, Described in the previous slide, we present here a sample media device, which has two media entities, this camera sensor and the host and the host processor interface to the camera. In this case, we assume that to be MIPC SI2 interface controller. The sensor is the source for the image data, which has source pad number zero and is connected to the input source pad of CSI entity on the sync pad zero of CSI. The CSI controller also has source link, which can be input to another entity in the media device, such as DDR memory or another IP such as ISP. The connection between these two entities the media link is represented by the black arrow. The media controller framework abstracts the V4L to kernel objects as below. The struct media device pointer mdev abstracts the V4L to device. V4L to sub devices and the video device video devices are seen as media entities. The type field of struct media entity is set to media entity type V4L2 subdev for sub devices or media entity type video device for the video device nodes. Drivers initialize the entity pads 
using media entity pads in it and register the entities with with the device with the media device by calling media device register entity v for l to driver initializes the media devices with instruct v for l to device using media device in it each entity driver initializes its entity and pad arrays using media entity pads in it Thus, the controls set by v 4 l driver are applicable for the media entities. So, the media controller framework leverages the controls provided by v 4 l So far, we have seen the control methods provided by v 4 l and now we will look into how the user space applications can leverage these controls. The framework provides IAC terms to enumerate the controls, that is the query CTRL, and for extended controls, VDA query ext CTRL. Applications can set the can get the control value by using VDA GCTRL, and for the extended controls, using VDA GEXT CTRLs. Applications can set the control value using VDA SCTRL and for extended controls using VDA SXCTRLs. Applications can also try setting the control value by using VDA try XCTRLs. Drivers must implement these IACTLs whenever the device supports one or, one or more controls. Custom control IDs must be exposed to the applications from the header file under the directory include slash uapi slash linux. Here is the code snippet for applications to enumerate the controls. Applications can query for all the controls using control id v4l2 cid base and all the way up to control v4l2 cid Last P1. Applications can enumerate the private controls provided by driver, starting with the control ID V4L2 CID private base. When changing the control value, applications can first query for the desired control using VDA GCTRL. Here we intend to change the value of a custom control. If the control is available, then get the control value using VDA GCTRL and then go ahead by setting the control value using VDA SCTRL. Here are a few notes on implementing controls. Driver implementation of controls need to be documented, that is under documentation slash user space api slash media slash drivers this is particularly useful when controls are implemented when custom controls are implemented v4l2 subdev controls can be overwritten by v4l2 device during sub device registration so decide which controls need protection and set the is private flag for such controls Another point is adding controls to V4L2 subdevice after the device registration will not have any effect. So add the required controls for the subdevice prior to calling V4L2 device register subdev. A good practice is to initialize the hardware with default values for the controls that configure the hardware. In such cases, the drivers can call v4l2 ctrl handler setup and initialize the control values for that hardware. This helps in applications to avoid setting the hardware to default values. So far, we have seen the structure of v4l2, the control methods provided by v4l2, 
and integration of the controls with media controller framework, and notes on how to implement the V4 into controls. And now we present a sample capture device to illustrate the control. The media device consists of two cameras connected to serializer. The image streams are aggregated by the serializer and deserializer combination and are received by the host at the MIPI-CSI to RX port. The green boxes here represent the media entities. The camera sensors each have the source pad connected to the sync pad of serial laser 0 and 1. The serial laser entity connects to the source the serial laser entity connects to the DC laser the DC laser has two source pads connected to the each of the RX ports. The yellow boxes here represent the video device nodes. So, how do we add controls? Drivers need to first fill the structures v4l to ctrl config and v4l to ctrl arcs. We will see in the next slide the contents of these structures. After initializing the above structures, controls can be added. For custom controls, by calling the v4l to ctrl new, new custom and for non menu standard controls by calling v4l to ctrl std. For standard menu controls, the controls can be added by calling v4l to ctrl new std menu. Here are the contents of the structure v4l to ctrl config. The desired operations for the control can be set in the v4l to ctrl ops parameter. The control id in the id parameter. Drivers can set a meaningful name for the control in the name parameter. The type of control can be set in the type parameter. The minimum control value allowed by the control can be set by the driver in the min parameter and the maximum value allowed by the control in the max parameter. For integer type controls, a step value can be specified. For example, the number of lanes on a MPCSI to interface. The default value for the control can be set in the left parameter. Here are the contents of structure v4l to ctrl ops. The gctrl gets the new value for the control, generally relevant for the volatile or the read-only controls, such as the signal strength. If not set, then the currently cached value is returned. Try ctrl tests whether the control's value is valid. This is only relevant when the usual min, max are the step values. Step checks are not sufficient. SCTRL sets the control value. SCTRL is compulsory. Here is the example for initializing V4L to CTRL structure. For the sample device we discussed in the previous slides. The CSI capture driver use, uses the SCTRL operations to set the number of lanes of the MIPI CSI to interface by using the custom control ID here. And here is the example for setting the contents of V4L to CTRL config. The ops parameter is set to capture CTRL ops shown in the previous slide. The ID value is set to the custom control ID 
which sets the number of lanes on the MIPCSI interface. The type of control is set to in type integer since the number of lanes is an integer value. The minimum number of lanes configurable is 1. The maximum number of lanes configurable is 4. And the step value to increment or decrement the lanes is 1. The default number of lanes is 1. Once the structures V4L to CTRL config and V4L to CTRL ops are initialized, the driver can add the controls, add the new custom control by calling the API V4L to CTRL new custom API. The drivers can implement a control handler by adding the V4L to CTRL handler structure to the top level stru structure or the driver's private structure. For V4L2 drivers, the control handler can be added to the at the same level where the V4L2 device is present and initialize the control handler and all the and add all the necessary controls for the handler as discussed in the previous slides. Optionally, any control that is interacting with hardware, the driver can force initialize these controls and free the control handler when the device is leaving or removed. And here are the steps for adding the control handler to the sample capture device. Struct capture dev is the top level structure describing this bridge device. This has the structure V4L2 device to describe the device instance and has the control handler. We initialize these structures as discussed as described in the previous slides and call V4L2 CTL handler in it with the number of controls handled by the control handler. The custom control to set the MIPCSI2 number of lanes is added by calling V4L2 CTRL new custom. And finally, V4L2 CTRL handler setup is called to initialize the default number of lanes for this device. The control notification can be set by calling V4L2 CTRL notify API with the control handler and the control ID for which the notification is required. For example, here is a sample code where the sensor driver, after adding the controls to its handler, requests a framework to be notified of the changes for the for setting the number of number of lanes and MIPCSI interface. The sensor CTRL notify function is called whenever the application changes the number of lanes on the video device node or the sub device node. And thus we have shown the sample capture device using V4L2 controls. And now we will look into the utilities provided for controls. The V4L utils package provides command line tool to control the devices. The list device argument lists all the V4L2 devices along with the video device number and the device name. The driver and device information can be obtained by the arguments all followed by device followed by the device node name and the controls owned by a device can be obtained by the arguments list CTRLs followed by the device node name and the command can be used to get or set the control value for the device nodes. And the current value of all the controls owned by a device can be specified by the argument log status for that device. 
with that we conclude our presentation on v4 to controls from the perspective of captured devices we have seen the structure of v4l2 framework and the control methods provided we also seen how applications can leverage these controls and notes on implementing these implementing the controls also implementation of sample captured device with the v4l2 control methods we hope this presentation provides fair knowledge of v4l2 controls and their use by captured devices please let us know any questions that you have thank you all for attending this presentation and see you at the exciting events thank you